Hello folks, R1 here. I'm going to start out with an apology, actually. My schedule that I like to put out my videos on has been a little disrupted lately, at least as far as War Thunder is concerned. Uh, they've been a little bit late, and that's been due to, in part, my coverage of the EVE Online 12th Alliance Tournament, but it's also been due, particularly this week, to the fact that I have been rather ill and have been pretty much bedridden since Monday. So I apologize. Uh, you would think that that would be an opportunity to actually get a little uh, ahead and get a few matches in and just sit still and do some editing, but uh, I couldn't even focus on the screen. I tried to uh, do a couple of matches and... Uh, I had to give up after a few minutes and just go lay down. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sorry if I sounded a little croaky. Um, and we'll try and get it back on schedule uh, as soon as we can. Uh, this upcoming week is the last weekend of the Alliance Tournament. So once I get things put together for that uh, next week, things should return to normal. And thank you for bearing with me. Uh, particularly you new subscribers that have signed on recently. Uh, your patience with me is appreciated. So I decided I was going to jump in the Falk Wolf here. I've never, for whatever reason, actually flown this airplane before, except possibly in a test flight, I think. But uh, uh, I have flown other Falk Wolf models, but not this particular one. It's bog stock. Nothing's upgraded on it at all. And... Uh, I thought, well, I'm going to take it and I'm going to take a uh, the Hetzer out. I had tried to run it a few matches, but that didn't work out too well, uh, just because I wasn't feeling well at the time. So I'm, I might have one or two things upgraded on the Hetzer, but uh, I think that was about it. So I figured I would just kind of start from scratch here with this match and go from there. So we pull this particular battle, of course realistic mode, uh, on Kuban. And I figure, well, this probably won't be a spectacular match. And at first, I'm absolutely dead right about that. But I think, well, it'll be a good way to ease back into uh, uh, into War Thunder after uh, a week of non-playing. I'm pretty pleased with the fact that it's a relatively well-populated match. And uh, it looks like we've got some pretty stiff competition now, as I cut in, hugging just under the cloud layer, um, I'm going to realize that I've kind of bitten off a bit more than I can chew. There are quite a few pilots in the air, as I'm about to discover. And uh, the first two, and potentially most dangerous ones out there, uh, prove to be uh, a pair of gentlemen in uh, Russian P-63s. Advocat and his friend Ener Jodar. Anyway, they proved to be kind of a major pain in everyone's side throughout the entire match. They're both very good pilots, and it was my misfortune to tangle with them in this uh, early match uh, in these particular vehicles. They do make a couple of mistakes that I should have been able to capitalize on, like right there. I just, I'm not familiar with these cannons or this airplane, and I should have this fella. I hit him uh, a pretty good hit, and that is eventually going to net me a kill assist, but I, sh I should have taken him down. There's no excuse for me not to have. It's just going to take a little while for me to get used to the Falk Wolves again, uh, and uh, this model in particular. Love the roll rate on this thing, but uh, kind of misjudging how much to lead the cannons. Anyway, this turns into a brutal little fight back and forth there's that kill assist kicking in we have a couple of uh, AA gunners on the ground that just kick butt throughout this entire match and uh, you'll you'll notice them getting kills left and right uh, just like they they just did but right about now those p63s are getting my range and or at least Advocat's getting my range and he takes me out with very little trouble and well played to him he did a good job I will uh, I will be far from the last air kill that that gentleman's going to get this match. And I decided to go ahead and jump into the uh, Hetzer, the Jag P-63. 
Panzer 38T, uh, as it's called in game. Um, it, the Hetz are actually, that's not really its name. Uh, it got dubbed that because the factory that made them, and I, the, the name of the factory escapes my, my memory right now, but uh, they confused it with another prototype design that was called the Hetzer, and the first production run went out with the Hetzer name attached to it, and the troops just started calling it that. It seemed to fit. Uh, it was a light tank destroyer that moved pretty good. It kept up with everything else very well, offered good protection, a good gun. Um, it was just all around a good vehicle, very reliable and well liked. And the name Hetzer seemed to stick. Hetzer actually means chaser in German. And it chased all over the battlefield, applying its firepower where it was needed. And in my opinion, is probably one of the more successful and reliable designs of the war on the side of the Germans. Uh, there goes our AA crews again, taking down what would have probably been a direct threat to me that Peschke, I think, had uh, me in its sights. So, thank you, AA crews. You probably saved my butt there and made the rest of this video possible. So, yes, as you can tell, I've kind of been wanting a little taste of revenge against the fellows that shot me down. But, frankly, the Hetzer just doesn't... Well, it, it, it can't get it up, <laughs> so to speak. It cannot get the gun elevation to be really effective at aerial... Uh, combat going on as directly overhead as most of this battle was. If I could catch something low on the horizon, yeah, sure, but uh, most everything during this whole fight takes place directly over my head and I don't have a chance to uh, get in any sort of position to bring that gun to bear. But that's okay. I put those thoughts aside and decide to stick with what's in front of me and try my best to support the team. I I'm at this particular moment, I'm trying to lob a shell over that ridge, but thats it's just not going to happen. I don't have quite good enough angle on that fellow over there. And besides, we have other uh, teammates over there in that area that will be well able to deal with him. Uh, it's not going to probably stop me from paying attention and look over my shoulder periodically to make sure that he doesn't get behind me at some point. But uh, I end up not worrying a great deal about the uh, far right uh, as this battle progresses. You know, especially from this angle that the, the upturned tank treads on the spine of the Hetzer, for some reason that, maybe it's that, the, the, the shape of the hull, the, the shape of the mantlet in the front, but the whole tank, it just it just reminds me of a snapping turtle for some reason. I'm, I'm probably alone in that, but it just seems to fit. Uh, the snapping turtle's mean. Once it bites, it does not let go until it's dead. And it's not really very slow. It's actually pretty darn fast, particularly if it's trying to get its toothy beak into you. Well, it's not really toothy, but it is a beak uh, of sorts as far as turtles go in that direction. I'm able to get in a good shot on that fella. I thought that was a glancing blow against that first tank, but apparently I set him on fire because I got the kill for him. Uh, I'm not able to catch this second tank though, and I'm going to have to go in pursuit. The, the chaser is going to have to go in pursuit, how appropriate. So I'm going to continue, and I kind of vow to, again, support the team as best I can, and take out anything along the way that I can that won't slow me down inordinately. Like this fellow right here. And that was a particularly lucky shot. Uh, took him out with one hit. I'm starting to, at this point, become fairly pleased with the Hetzer. I kind of had my doubts. I mean, I recognized I hadn't really upgraded the this tank destroyer, but uh, I was starting to get the hang of it and really enjoy playing this particular vehicle. So I press forward, and I, I don't know if I can lob this over that ridge or not. There's not much drop to these shells. Well, it managed it, and I am able to do some damage. Now, at this point, I noticed that a lot of our AI tanks are tied up dealing with enemy AI tanks. And I paused just long enough to 
put a couple of shots into them. I'd like to free our AI tanks up to go ahead and press forward toward the enemy base. But they're not going to do that as long as these AI tanks are alive. On the other hand, I don't want to waste a lot of time with them. So if they don't go down quickly like that, I'm just going to continue on. But I'm going to remember that they're there. And we'll come back to them uh, a little bit later. Now what I'm going to see next actually irks me just a little bit. I notice that there are a total of three enemy medium tanks that are running down the far side of the map behind that ridge, bypassing our base entirely, heading directly back to camp our spawn. They care nothing about the win, they just want to rack up some kills. And I've done that myself to a degree from time to time, but maybe it's because I'm cranky because I've been not feeling well, but it kind of irked me this time and I decided that I just was not going to let that happen. So I pursue them one down. They make the mistake of veering back out to the right where I have another good shot at them and I punish them for that mistake. I'm not really angry at these players, but oh, it was kind of a cheap tactic on their part. I mean, not a bad one and totally within the bounds, but it just annoyed me this particular round. So I'm going to have to move forward a little bit more because these fellows are uh, putting a ridge between me and them. Well, I say these fellows. I think we're down to one now. And... Truthfully, our players that were spawning in could probably have handled him, but, well, two down already. Let's just go ahead and complete the set. There we go. Mission accomplished. Now I can quit being a jerk and go back to trying to help our team win the match instead of uh, simply just preventing the other team from having some fun. I'm going to go ahead. My decision is going to be to head to uh, the capture point ahead of me, B. We need to take that if we want to win or wipe out the entire enemy team. Uh, I'm not moving as quickly right now. The Hetzer struggles a little bit on uphill grades, and so that's slowing me down. I'm going to keep heading in that direction. That's also in the direction of the enemy spawn points. And I'm going to clear everything out along the way that I come across. Not letting it slow me down too much, but I'm just going to try and keep everything bad not at my back. So, we're going to make steady progress across the map here. I'm, I'm coming back across that cluster of AI tanks that I noticed earlier. So, like this one, I'm going to shoot him in the heart. And that doesn't do it. So, I'll take a moment and shoot him in the head. Right in that side slit. And that doesn't do it. So, when in doubt, shoot him in the neck. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and move forward to go directly over this ridge and poke my nose over to see if uh, enemy, any enemy players are on their way. I'd love to shoot down that plane, but again, don't have the elevation to do it. And it's at that point that I glance at the map and realize I've missed one to my right. So I wheel it around. If I take out this last AI tank, that's going to free up ours to go ahead and move forward. And that's kind of what I want. I want pressure applied all across this front from players and AI tanks alike. It will pay dividends. If they're shooting at the AI tanks because they're encroaching on their base, that means they're not shooting at me. I'm kind of curious to see how well the Hetzer handles these slopes when it's fully upgraded. Uh, but its default configuration certainly struggles with these gradients. I, I think that's to be expected. Now, I keep expecting to see enemy reinforcements come whizzing down this road to my left. So you'll notice me uh, 
continually glancing over to that side, trying to keep my nose kind of in that direction. But oddly enough, the uh, reinforcements don't really materialize. Uh, I'm starting to see planes in the air though, so that may mean that they're all out of tanks and maybe all in planes. I'm going to check here in a moment and see that's probably not the case, but they do seem to be taking their time. I don't, in, in truth, I think that they don't have much left as far as ground vehicles, but uh, we do encounter a couple of more here before the, uh, the end of this match. And meanwhile, if you've been keeping track of messages in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice there's been quite a lively little aerial engagement going on. Lots of casualties on both sides, again, our anti-aircraft personnel on the ground have been doing a marvelous job and there's one for the other team he's been busy as well and I put a shot clean over him I, I thought it was gonna drop a little bit more than that and I start taking damage my cannon barrel gets damaged I actually end up getting hurt worse in this little exchange than I realized but we'll go ahead and get the second shot on target and I end up with a kill assist out of that. I think uh, probably one of our students actually ended up getting the kill for that. I had pressed forward to the other side of the cap circle because he did call in artillery on me before I killed him and uh, I had to move over to this far side so I wouldn't get creamed. I'm getting strafed by cannon fire as well but that ends up being a suicide run for that Yak-9T. And he doesn't do any significant damage. But as I go to take a shot at this AA unit, I suddenly realize my gun won't fire. Nor can I change ammo. I got torn up a little worse than I thought I did. And I'm glad I realized that before an enemy tank came over the horizon. So I have no choice. I have to start repairing. And I've angled my tank as best I can, considering the two likely directions of attack. Mm, but I've kind of misjudged it, and if those guys get a clean shot at me, they're going to tear up my side. Fortunately, my repair doesn't take very long, and I'm able to reposition within just a few seconds. That made me sweat just a second there, and I realize he's still at pretty decent range. And it's that uh, flat gunner again that I just took out a minute ago. We've captured the zone, and we take him out as well. And that's pretty much the match. It was a fun, fast-paced match, and although I sucked with the Fock Wolf, the heads are more than made up for it. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry that the beginning of the match was a little slow, but I think it ended up pretty good. I'm going to enjoy playing the Hetzer, I think. I am going to try and slip in one last anti-aircraft kill here before the end of the match, just to see how it does with long-range sniping, and... Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, this match allowed me to actually get some upgrades on the Hetzer, which is quite welcome. Since it was pretty much, except for parts, I think, and maybe tracks, it was all default, including the ammunition. But this stock ammo is not bad. Uh, Ten kills altogether. Um, oh, fire extinguisher is that? That's probably something good to have. And a few other little goodies in there as well. Um, Ten kills altogether, and I believe it ended up being six player kills and four NPC kills, which ended up giving me a fairly good total. I can't complain about that at all. Well, anyway, that's it. Just a fun, quick little match I thought you guys might enjoy. Um, I'll be seeing you again with more regularity uh, next week. Thanks for being patient, guys. I do appreciate it. And again, all of you new subscribers, thank you for uh, subscribing to this channel. That really helps. All of you, please have a great weekend. And until I see you again, good hunting.